Joining online to Taking Back Your Life, Living, Thinking Right so that you can live right. So you have joined a class that has been going on for three weeks and this is our fourth and final week. We had a little holiday mini master, if you will. And so we hope that you feel connected. We hope you feel a part of our group. We have prayed for you already this morning. Uh, girls, would you welcome our online girls meeting with us today? They, we, I don't know what it is. The Lord has just connected us and we love you. And we think about you and I'm very much aware that you are out there and try to look at you just like you were sitting here. Uh, I want to do a special shout out today to Miss Ellen Valentine. I learned today that Miss Ellen is 93 and she watches faithfully our Bible study this morning. So thank you, Miss Ellen. And I hope that you feel loved today, as do all of you who are joining us today and in this room. I do sense that the Lord has a special word today. And as we conclude this particular study, we have been talking a lot about thinking right and living right. This particular study has been very practical in nature. I love that. We have walked through a lot of lessons with Paul. And I love how he teaches because it's very practical in nature as well. And so it's not just the hearing of what we've been studying. It's not just the hearing of that. It is the doing of it. It is the moving forward and making some changes. Changes, developing some habits, developing some patterns, some biblical patterns in our life. So you have a handout today. I'd love for you to grab that. If you're online, this has been uh, uh, posted there for you as well. Just a little handout where we are walking through and we are reinforcing again today the principles of not only what we're doing, but how we are doing it. I realize it's not enough to say, you need to do this. The Bible says you need to do this. Listen, I'm going to need to know how exactly. That's going to play out. How is God's Word going to be active and relative and play out in my life? And not just my life in general. I'm talking about my crazy life and the specifics of difficulty and hardships or areas of suffering or um, things that are going on, times of testing that are going on. How exactly does God's Word, how exactly do these biblical principles work in my life? We need to put these to work on a daily basis. So I hope this comes second nature to you. You're probably rolling your eyes. We go over this every week. Yes, we do. And I hope that it just comes right off. I know what, I know what she's going to say here. Because we are talking about taking back your life. This is the what we are doing in this study and in these principles. We're taking things back and we're learning to think right. That's what we're going for. That's what the Lord is going for. As we've read through all of these scriptures, as the handouts I've given, you've had scripture after scripture. This is what God is going for. This is how we do it. We've, we've developed now, this is the fifth step. This is our fourth week together. We already know we're going to fix our focus. I hope you're continuing to work on that. I hope that when you get focused uh, on a problem or you get focused on a, a situation or a person or something that offended you or something that hurt your feelings or became a chip on your shoulder or something happened, I assure you that the enemy is going to see to it that something happened. Because the minute you walk out of this class and go, I'm, I'm all in. I am all in on it. This is what I am now doing. The enemy will meet you at the parking lot and say, well, we will see about that. We will see just how long you're going to be able to do your little Christian things. Listen, we need to serve notice on him today. I'm serious. I'm serious. You do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. And this is what I know I need to do. And so he will, he will be sure to put a situation in your life. And, and, and I need you to think of it like this, too. It's also a time of testing. Okay, I can't get to that right now. I want to see you know that when we get to the Hang with me. Let's do our thing. Let's do our reminder. We're going to fix our focus. We're going to strip off sin and weight. Two different things, remember. We're going to follow directions. The directions in God's Word, we are going to obey the instructions that He's giving us. And be, um, be in tune and be in cooperation with his timing as well. We've said that. And number four, which I think is the most important, we're going to read and speak scripture. This is the regular thing we're going to do. This is the habitual process that we are going to pick up. Uh, every morning I have developed certain habits that I do. I, I brush my teeth every morning because I know that that is a healthy thing for me to do. I should do that. It's good for me to do that. I take a handful of vitamins because I believe there is a significant advantage. There's a benefit for me in doing that. I do a, a, a little stretching exercise routine that I have and that sounds like a cheerleader. I do a little routine. I do a routine every morning. Um, I assure you, 
it's more stretching and yawning than exercise. But I attempt to do this little eight minute, ten minute ritual thing because it's beneficial for me to do that because it will make me healthy. It's a proven fact. And the truth is, to be honest with you, I feel better when I do. I don't feel as good when I don't. Question. Spiritual question. And we flip all these things to the spiritual side. Question. Are you feeling better because of the things that you have implemented, the habits that you have started in your life? Do you sense the feeling emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, maybe in some relationship areas? Have you brought, do you feel the health coming in to your life as a result of doing that? So if you're not, we, we, we've got to ramp this up. I'm serious about these things, these habits will begin to help you feel better in those ways. I didn't say it's going to change everything. I said it's going to make you feel better. It, you know what it's going to change? It's going to change you. And that's what the Lord is going for. You start doing these things, it's not going to, oh, marriage gets great and finances and the whole thing, it's all better now. That's, that's not how God works. That's not what His Word tells us. He says if you will do these things, you will begin to change and you will be better and you will act better when you feel better, react better. So they're just habits that we have uh, incorporated in our life. We want to be strong. I remember saying to the, to the Lord, this has been years ago, my mother died very young when she was 40 and had a lot of cancer and things and sickness in our family and in our generations. And I have said to the Lord years ago, I want so bad to finish strong. If you will allow me, I want to serve you to the day that I die. I've been serving in ministry about 29 years and I've asked the Lord, at year 25, I asked the Lord for another 25. Would you grant me another 25 to the best of my ability? I will serve you with my last breath if you will allow me to do that. And so the next morning, I'm getting up and do my little exercise routine, and I'm fussing and fighting and huffing and puffing, and you know, and I don't like it because I don't like anything about it. I don't like the yoga pants. I don't like to sweat. I don't like the bike that goes nowhere. I don't like anything about it. But I do it. You know why I do it? Because I want to finish strong. Because this is what the Lord said. If you want to finish strong, you're going to have to be strong. You don't just get up and declare, I'm going to finish strong. That's not how it works. You finish strong because you are strong. And a strong woman doesn't happen one day, just overnight. You don't become a strong woman overnight. You become a strong woman over time. I've done this many times in my life where I, and I'll probably do this again in January, but I'll get it set in my mind that I'm going to get to exercise and I'm going to do really this better routine and I'm going to go work out with the weights and the resistance and all that. And I'll do it for about a day. But I go in there with a great attitude for like one day. You know, and I'm working so hard and I'm lifting the weights and I'm trying to act like I know what I'm doing and then I can't move my arms for the next week because I, I tried to just put it all in one day. We know that's not how it works. We know uh, what we're going to get to in, in number five. We know that as we are positioning ourselves and as we are making and developing these habits and as we are growing these in our life. I have permission to share this story Miss Joan was telling me this morning. But over this time that she's been in Bible study, that there has been a particular thing going on in her life, a particular hard thing that she was having great difficulty with. It even got to the point where it began to cause nightmares. Anybody experience things like that? I, I certainly have. Something would be so strong in my life that in the night I would just wake up in a terror, terrible nightmare. And she said over these last weeks as she's been de developing these things in her life and as she's been sitting in class each week, last week the Lord spoke to her and she began to implement this and all of that changed. And the, the growing that happened because she positioned herself to receive the seed of God's Word, that seed took root and it broke a stronghold in her life. That's what God's Word will do. Is you, you take this in and you let this grow and you water it like we're going to talk about and it begins to grow and it starts breaking habits, bad habits. It starts breaking thought life and it starts breaking strongholds. So this is number five. Those are the four things we've talked about before. Um, here's the fifth one. And y'all are, are going to be so mad at me, but I don't even care because um, it's like four things and you're like, you're... Number five is supposed to be one thing, like all of the rest of them, but it's not. It's four things, and I'm sorry, 
not sorry, but I just want you to know that there's going to be four things. And it's coming from Colossians. Let's read Colossians first before we write out our words because you're going to be able to pick these out very quickly on, on the direction uh, as we start to grow in all of these directions. You'll be able to pick these up quickly. I'm reading in Colossians 2. This is the New Living Translation. Uh, I'm going to pick up at verse um, 6. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. And now, everybody say, and now. This is where I want to say, uh, you know, as we end this class time together, where we say, now what? And now? Like now what? Like what am I going to do tomorrow? I hope you have a plan. Uh, you need to develop that and go, okay, we're not meeting next Tuesday. What will you be doing tomorrow that, that the growth process can, continues to uh, accelerate? And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to live in obedience to Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and draw up nourishment from Him so you will grow in faith. I love that. I love when the Bible says, so that. Why do you need to do this? So that. He said, now what? Now here's what to do. So that, it's very clear, very practical. So that you will grow in faith, strong and vigorous in the truth that you were taught. Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all he has done. So in our fifth um, practical step, here's what we're going to do. What, what, what's going to go down? What word do you think we're coming out of Colossians with? Absolutely, rooted. We are going to develop our roots. We are going to be rooted. Now, here's an interesting thing about the root system. We talked some ab about this with Chasing Vines Bible Study and then girls who are joining online. If you've missed any of those studies, they're all available uh, on our website, greenacreswomen.org. You can click on Teaching Training tab. All the videos from all of the studies that we have done are available there, including these. So uh, as we look at being rooted... Uh, what, what exactly does that mean? From the original language, rooted means uh, that we have grown deep, that our roots are growing down. Here's the, the function, if you will, of a root system. We talked a little bit about this in Chasing Vines, but there are, there are several functions of the root system, but I want to hit on three of them today. As we think about how we can be rooted in God's Word, here's the function of the root system. Here's three of them. To anchor, to anchor, so to anchor the plant, but think of that spiritually, as you are rooted, you are anchored. That means you're not tossed to and fro, as James says, by every storm in life, that you are anchored. God's Word will anchor you. You're rooted. Another function of the root system is to absorb. So as you get in God's Word, just like what happened to Miss Joan, it, it, it absorbed, she got rooted and it absorbed. It began to come up into her and make a change. So it began to absorb. So think about with a plant, those roots absorb nutrients, they absorb minerals, they absorb water when it rains, and feed the plant. But here's my favorite function of the root system. It's to store. The root system will store nutrients and minerals, and get this, get this, it will store them especially for times of drought and disease. So if you have a strong root system, as you're storing God's Word, as you're feeding, as you're nourishing, and those roots are going down deep, when a spiritual drought hits, when a time of difficulty or disease or unexpected uh, a hardship comes in, you are rooted and you have what you need to draw from in that moment. So many of us, and even in our class, have lost loved ones. Uh, this week, we have lost three people that we have known very well. Two for our age, to COVID. It, it has been shocking. I, I have thought to myself, what is, but all three of them were men, and I thought, what are, what are their wives going to do? What, like, what do you get up like the next day? You are, they're no longer in your life. When things like that, that you have that nourishment, the root system to draw from. And so th that's part of the scripture is that we're going to be rooted. Another thing it says says be, so that's going down deep. Another part was built up. So we're going to be rooted, going down deep, and then built up. So uh, your translation might say established. Your translation might say strengthened. 
to make strong. So we're going to go deep so that we can be built up. So that we are building strong faith in our life. We're building uh, obedience as we're walking in obedience to God's Word. Uh, Being built up means that you're firm in your faith. You're always improving. You're increasing and you're expanding. Here's a funny thing with um, increasing and expanding. You know, I've challenged you before in this class and online to ask the Lord for a word for 2021, for this next year. Ask the Lord for a word. It's like a banner over your life. Maybe something He wants to develop or sharpen or grow. This is an area He wants you to build up. So since about Thanksgiving, I've been asking the Lord, would you give me a word for 2021? And I got that word uh, just a week or so ago when I've been studying through Psalms. And the word came through various scriptures. Psalm 67 talks about um, the harvest that will be in abundance. Psalm 68 says you said abundant, um, that you send abundant rain to refresh the the weary land. Psalm 69, several of the Psalms kept talking about that. So I began to ask the Lord, this this has come up like multiple times, is abundant my word for 2021? And over the next few days, he began to confirm through his word that that's it. So I began to write that down and write down those references. And I wrote down the definition. I encourage you to do that. Um, This is kind of the thing that I do with the Lord. When I'm doing my study time, I have my workbook out and I have my Bible right here on my desk. And so as I'm reading God's Word, just like we did today, I process it and I work through it. This is how I get rooted on the pages of these words. So I read the Bible, what He says to me. I write questions. I write out what I believe He is saying. I write out my definition. I write to Him. And this is this back and forth thing we do. And girls, that's how I fell in love. That through communication. And so get yourself a notebook. Start my very first page. You'll see, as with journals that I've done for 20-something years now, what my word for the year. My word for 2020 was through. T-H-R-O-U-G-H, through. I had no idea in January, or really the Lord gave me that word around December or so, what I would be going through in 2020. And I think part of the word, looking back, it's the Lord to remind me, don't get stuck. Uh, Miss Stewart, we're going to have to keep going through. We're not going to get bogged down. We're not going to get stuck. We're not going backwards. We're going through. We're not going to go around the mountain a thousand times. Going through. So when uh, the Lord confirmed that my word for 2021 was abundant, in all honesty, I got excited about it. I'm going like, finally, finally, I get a good word, please. Yes, bring on the abundant. It just felt like to me, because of the English word that we know and the way we've, we've de- defined that word, it felt like I'm getting a lot of stuff this year. I don't know. It just sort of felt like it's going to be abundant, like a bunch. It's not what the definition means. Here's the deal. When you look that up in the original language and you start looking that up in scriptures, it's not so much that the Lord is giving to you abundantly. Now, John 10, 10 says, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. That's usually the verse that we refer to. But if you look through Psalms and so many other scriptures, abundant is not talking about what the Lord is giving you. It's talking about what the Lord is asking you to give to Him. You get that. Miss Cheryl shaking her head. Yeah, oh yeah, you got... I, and so then the whole thing turned around on me. And I'm like, this, so this is not you giving me... I'm, so how did this word turn to such a fun word to now such a, such a word that, that feels like it's going to be requiring... Work. Absolutely, work. And the definition, I could read it to you out of my scripture, but I think I remembered it. The definition is that it is to a deeper quantity... No, it's to an extreme quantity and deeper quality. Abundant, when the word abundant, to add to an extreme quantity, like more. So what I'm hearing the Lord say to me through my word for 2021 is I, I'm gonna want I, I'm gonna want more. Like I'm gonna want more of you. I'm gonna want more. I'm gonna want more of these scriptures. I'm gonna need more of this. I'm gonna need this to be in abundance. It's not so much, oh, let me just pour some stuff on you. You know what it is? I'm going to need to pour some stuff on him. We're going to have to get to a little deeper degree. We're going to have to get a better quality going here, a deeper quantity. So that's where the built up comes in. So here's the deal. 
what we know about Scripture. Well, let me give you this last one, and I'll tell you what, we, what we've learned about Scripture during this time. So we're going to be rooted, just like Colossians says. We're going to be built up or strengthened or established, whatever your translation says. Uh, another part of that Scripture talks about us being strong. So that's another part, to be strong. We, got, we, we have to work at building strength to be strong. You're not strong just because you say you are. That's not how it works. And then the last one, do you recall what the last one is? What would you guess? Rooted and built up, strong and established with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So we're going to develop a thankful heart. Now, with a thankful heart, we're going to develop thankful words. We need to think about grateful conversations, grateful language. Think about the things you've said over the last three days. Did it come across as critical, as negative, as complaining, as whining, and just didn't get your way and things that were... We have to develop, and this takes work because it naturally, it comes by naturally for us to just talk about what we don't like and what we want to fix, and somebody did something and hurt our feelings. And listen, here's how the enemy works. I have, I have seen him do this to me a thousand times. Learn this lesson from me. You know that the Bible says that the enemy is the, he, he is the counterfeit. He tries to counterfeit. He, he will d- disguise himself as an angel of light. Uh, so if the Lord comes to comfort, the Bible says comfort, that he is our comforter. I like to think about that like as an actual comforter, like off of my bed, a comforter. That he wraps himself around me to warm, to feel safe, to feel loved, I, to a comforter that he comforts my soul, he comforts my heart, he comforts me. That's how I think of comforter. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. And you think, I'm not trying to make that too, you know, just too ordinary. But I feel, I feel that wrapping around and that love and that security. You know, we can do that with a child. You know, boy, boy, those moms these days, we've got that little three-month-old baby, Samantha, and that my daughter wraps her in a thing so tight she cannot even. I mean, she she cannot. Yeah, y'all seen it? Yeah. They wrap them like my word. Not, and and swaddle is the word. That is not swallowing. That is just prison. I mean, that she is. <laughs> and that blanket is up to her neck. That child is not getting out of there through the night, through the middle of the night. That child is not getting out. That's what the Lord does to me, child. You're going to have to put this arm, and there's a process to it. You know, they, they put that baby out, and they put this arm down, and this one over here is going all over. Put this arm down, and they wrap this side, wrap this side. I feel like that's what the Lord does with me. Don't, put this arm down, get this arm down, start, stop wailing, stop, stop all this stuff, and wraps me that I can't hardly move so that I can rest. So that I can rest. So that I can be restored. But here's the deal. You know, the Bible says that the enemy comes and he'll try to counterfeit and he'll, he'll, try, to, he'll try to do anything to, to, to be just what, to, to do something opposite of what the Lord is trying to do. But do you know that the enemy will also comfort us? He does the same thing in a different way. Have you ever heard to hurt someone hurt your feelings or maybe in a relationship with your husband or a mother-in-law or, or a co-worker or a, anybody in your family, just a relationship issue, and then, and then something, somebody says something and it hurt your feelings and you walked off. You know who comes around? The enemy with a comforter. Puts his arm around you, girl. I, you, that is terrible what she said to you. That, she was so wrong. See, and, now, and now you're kind of... I mean, he's affirming your hurt feelings. He's affirming that emotional instability that has just been built or that hurt that's been... And he's like, you know, now her true character's coming out. See, you should have seen this all day. And she, you know what? She did it last week too. If you'll think about it, she did... She has done this to you for years or your husband or whoever the thing or, or even like a doctor with a diagnosis. This is what the doctor said. Can you believe... Now he's been telling you this now. You're never going to get over it. You're going to die. You see what he does? Oh, he, uh, he comforts you as well. He affirms those hurt feelings. And so when we're talking about these three things on the rooted, uh, built up, and strong, one of the main ways, one of the big ways that the Lord gets to these three things uh, specifically is through test. He will test to see, are we rooted? Are we stable? Are we still tossed and turned and, and all over the map? Are we being rooted? Are we being strong? Have we developed some spiritual muscles? Are we acting in faith? 
Are we acting in obedience? Are we, are we getting stronger? Is our faith becoming firm? Here's how he tests that. He, he, he will test it through a trial or a test in our life. We know this. His word tells us. We learned this in a previous study. It was in James. Uh, James 1, 3. Count it all joy, remember? When you in, in, endured um, a testing. We know that testing. Romans tells us we know that testing produces character and perseverance and perseverance hope. And hope does not disappoint. We have these tests. That God's word says, this is good for you. See, the enemy comes along and goes, I cannot, you're having to do this again. Haven't you been in church? Didn't you tithe last month? And you've served and you've done, and look what the Lord does. Look what happens. He doesn't care. He's not fair. All of those things. And he'll begin to tell you, but the Bible says, when you're going to be built up and rooted, you're going to have to endure tests. But here's the thing. Not y'all. I'm talking about the other girls. Uh, they go through a test and they get a little testy. Mm -hmm. Anybody? They go through a test in their life and it doesn't produce the roots, the building up and the strength. It produces a little attitude. It produces a little testy. Get a little temper when we're being tested. Anybody? Just we, Things happen and then maybe one or two more things on top of that. We develop a little temper with our test. And that's what uh, the enemy is going for. The Lord is saying, child, I'm trying to bring this into your life to do these three things. And, and, and what I'd love for you to do, instead of being testy, instead of developing your temper, what I would love, what would just bless the socks off the Lord, is if you would return all of that with thankful words, a thankful conversation, thankful narrative in your life. All of that, it doesn't happen naturally that these things produce a level of thanksgiving and appreciative and gratefulness in our life. These things, these times of testing, usually produce attitude. That's where our practical stuff comes into play. That girl, you ought to be so excited because it's your opportunity. This is a brand new opportunity for you to say to the Lord, I'm committing, I'm committing to be rooted and strong. And now, now I'm ready. Now I see that when a test comes, the enemy won't just not blindside me and knock the breath out of me. Now I'm going to know exactly what I need to do. And I'm going to come out the other side. I'm coming out on this side thankful and blessing the Lord and telling people the great things that the Lord has done in your life. I, I think it's Psalm chapter 1. Yeah, when I first started studying Psalms, Psalms chapter 1, it may be verse 2 even. It's like right at the beginning of Psalms. The Bible says for us to think about ways that we can follow Him more closely. Give your attention to. Think about ways. Is that what you spend your time thinking about? I, I never did. I didn't sit around thinking, how can I follow the Lord more closely? I'm thinking about what I see on Facebook. I'm thinking about the sales. I'm thinking about, does anybody like me, share me, anything in all my stuff? I'm, just, I'm thinking about a lot of other craziness. Think about, if you just, this afternoon, sit still and be quiet and ask the Lord to give you thoughts that would help you follow Him more closely. I pulled this from the New Living Bible. A lot of times I read from the New Living Translation, but this is the Living Bible. Uh, my dad had the Living Bible in our house for years, and I pulled it up out of that Bible. But this is what it says about our test and about being rooted and strong and what it's going to produce in our life, that these things would produce that thankfulness. Uh, the Bible says in James chapter 1, which I mentioned, I love the wording in the Living Bible. I'm going to make this feminine. Dear sisters... Is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Then be happy. Everybody, shake your head. Be happy. For when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything strong in character, full and complete. If you want to know what God wants you to do, ask Him. He will gladly tell you, for he is always ready to give a bountiful supply, there's my abundant word, bountiful supply of wisdom to all who will ask him, and he will not resent it. But when you ask him, be sure that you really expect for him to tell you, for a doubtful mind will be sure that you, uh, but when you ask him, be sure that you really expect 
to tell you, for a doubtful mind will be unsettled as a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind to and fro. And every decision you then make will be uncertain as you turn first this way and then that. Do not be unstable. If you don't ask with faith, don't expect the Lord to give you the solid answer, but ask in faith. And I want to close our time together with not only asking in faith, but that we act in faith. All of our lessons these weeks have been talking about our action. It's been talking about our behavior, our thought life, our actions. It's been things we have the ability to control. So many things in our life we might not have the ability to control. If someone gets sick, if someone gets laid off, if someone has infertility infertility issues or adoption issues or a prodigal son or addiction or temptation, there's so much we cannot control. Everything that has been taught on our application, you have the ability to control. You will choose whether you will do it or whether you won't do it. You will choose to act in faith. As we are winding up our time today and then even winding up our year, if you'll turn in your Bibles to Luke, Luke chapter 1, I want to just reinforce our message today about Um, acting in faith and behaving in faith. This is the story of Mary. So we're coming to the time of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus is being born. Turn to Luke chapter 1. I think I want to be in verse um, 38, I think. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do 38 and 45, Luke chapter 1. So Mary is a great example of a woman who behaved in faith. She believed God and she behaved in faith. This is what the Bible says. See what we can learn. After she heard all that the Lord was uh, about to do in her life, the impossible, if you will. The Bible says uh, early on that Mary, that she had found favor with the Lord. And I, I always wondered, how did she do that? Like, how did she get on the favorite list? How was she favored? What determined that? I wanted so bad to know that because I thought whatever she did to be favored, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, I want to be on the favorite list. There's no favorite list. The Bible says she was highly favored. It does not say why, but as we look at her actions and her reaction to what was told her, to the impossible situation in her life, you might better understand why she was favored. The Bible says this, verse 38, after she heard all of those things, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever He wants. May everything that you have said come true. I, I memorized that verse with um, that, um, I am your maid servant, let it be as you desire. Is that your attitude? Is that your action? Let it be as you desire. And then I'll close with Luke 1, 45 says, Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So as we look at how we behave and how we believe, that's the challenge for our time together. Now, as you begin to think about what you're going to do tomorrow, what you're going to do next week, I want to make a recommendation for you. I have a great friend, Leanne Kirkendall. She has spoken here before. She just released a great devotional book. It's called called 24 Karat Life. Living Every Day Refined by God's Word. Her whole premise in this, and the reason I want to recommend it, is because she teaches you how to dig out treasures. If you kept reading in Colossians, it would say to you, dig out the treasures and the wisdom and the knowledge. And so she does a lot of this digging out gold. But what I really love about it is there's a companion Bible study with this. It's leannkirkendall.com. That's L-E-E-A-N-N. Kirkendall is K-I-R-K-I-N. D-O-L-L. LeanneKirkendall.com and there's a free tab that says uh, download the free Bible study companion and you can just click on that and get the whole thing. Uh, It is wonderful. So have some plan in place. Have some steps already designed what you will do next so that you can behave in faith and you can believe God. Thanks girls for joining us online today.